So what can we do to prevent these voltage instabilities? So one of the things we can do, as we saw in uh, the previous module, module number eight, on synchronous generators, the synchronous generators supply uh, reactive power uh, by means of their excitation control. So they can supply reactive power and they can also absorb reactive power. <laughs> the other thing we can do is uh, supply this reactive power using uh, so-called static reactive power compensation devices. And uh, so it clearly shows the need for this reactive power reserve that we have to have. So let's start with uh, synchronous generators and look at their uh, reactive power supply capability. Uh, so this uh, positive Q means uh, we are uh, operating in um, over, um, over excitation mode where the generator is supplying reactive power where the negative value of Q is underexcited. Okay, so we'll see that in region A, uh, we are limited by the heating of the machine. So, and this is, uh, these different curves uh, correspond to different pressure of hydrogen for cooling, and here voltage is assumed to be at uh, one per unit uh, magnitude, but uh, similar curves can be obtained for slightly different voltages. <clears throat> so in region A, we are limited by the heating of the windings, uh, steer windings, so the, the magnitude of uh, this apparent power should be constant along these curves uh, as given by this expression over here. Uh, at, uh, in region B, uh, we are limited by the, this is uh, sort of the rated point here. Uh, in region B, uh, we are limited by the overheating of the field winding, whereas in region C, we are limited where we are uh, very under excited, uh, we're limited by the saturation of uh, end windings or end turns. <clears throat> so these are typical uh, reactive power supply capabilities of synchronous generators that one can look up in uh, the data sheets of these uh, synchronous generators. Now uh, we'll move on to, uh, and we saw earlier that uh, these synchronous generators reactive power, uh, how they can be controlled, and so I'll not elaborate on that in this module here. <clears throat> so now we'll go on to this uh, static uh, reactive power compensation devices, and in order to understand uh, first we sh how they work, uh, let's first look at the principle, okay? So let's say that we have a very simple system. At this bus, we have capability of this drawing this current, let's say either uh, 90 degrees uh, leading or lagging with respect to this bus voltage here. And uh, looking from, this, uh, from these terminals into the, uh, into the system, we can represent the system by this Thevenin voltage uh, in series with this uh, Thevenin impedance or reactance X Thevenin, like this here. <clears throat> so the equation that we have in this loop is this here. The bus voltage is uh, this Thevenin voltage uh, minus the drop across this reactance due to this current. So let's see what happens. Let's take uh, bus voltage as the reference over here, okay? And uh, the current here is leading. So this is the leading situation here where the current is leading this bus voltage, and this equation tells us is that uh, the Thevenin voltage will be over here. <clears throat> so, the, so the conclusion we can draw from this phasor diagram is that by making the current leading, we can make the voltage at this terminal, at this bus, greater than what the Thevenin voltage is. Uh, the opposite happens. Uh, once again, we take this V bus as the reference, but this time the current is lagging, as we see here. Uh, this current is lagging the, the bus voltage, and in this case, uh, the Thevenin voltage is greater. So what is telling us is that for, uh, by, uh, you know, if the current is lagging, then the voltage here would be smaller in magnitude compared to what the Thevenin voltage is, okay? So that's the principle on which uh, 
uh, these uh, static uh, water compensation devices work, they either draw uh, a leading power factor current or a lagging power factor current, and using the internal impedance of the system looking from that bus, they can in either increase or decrease the terminal voltage at which they are connected, or perhaps somewhere else too, okay? So one of the uh, things we can do is make use of these capacitors over here. So that's the, the impedance or reactance of this capacitor, and uh, forget about the small inductance here, that's for basically to avoid inrush currents. So we can have a mechanical switch, and uh, actually many such uh, capacitors are uh, switched in, or in and out of the circuit or the system by means of these mechanical switches, but uh, <clears throat> if you want them to operate fast and uh, repeatedly, uh, then uh, it'll be better to have uh, solid state devices so we can have these two, two thyristors, either both are on or both are off here. Yeah. So basically, uh, the switch is on, when both thyristors are gated on, current can flow in either direction, and uh, if you want to take this capacitor out of the circuit, we turn, uh, we remove the gate pulses to these thyristors, and they will turn off, okay? So that's as simple as that. So what's happening is that, uh, 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 you know, these capacitors would provide the reactive current, which is leading this bus voltage to which these, this capacitor is connected. But uh, you can see the limitation here in these devices, that as the, the bus voltage goes down, let's say you are at this point here, and the corresponding current is over here. If the bus voltage were to go down, the current, reactive current that will supply, would also go down, because this is a constant impedance, right? <clears throat> so at lower bus voltage, the reactive current has gone down, and therefore the reactive power that this capacitor supplies has also gone down. So uh, when the voltage has gone down, the reactive power that it supplies has gone down, and at this condition, uh, that is the case where we need the reactive power the most, right? And this has gone down as a square of this voltage because, uh, uh, you know, the reactive power is V squared omega C. So uh, it is uh, somewhat not as effective as a statcom that we'll see later on, okay? Because here, both voltage and current both go down, All right? <clears throat> the other uh, static device that we can use uh, is uh, uh, these reactors here, and uh, they are connected in series with uh, two thyristors, and we can control the, <clears throat> the the conduction angle, or some, some people would call it delay angle of uh, these uh, thyristors. So if, uh, with respect to this bus voltage here, uh, the gate pulse comes before this 90 degrees angle here, then the current can flow uh, continuously. So current can flow through, uh, in, in the positive direction it will flow through here, and in the negative direction, it will flow through here, and as if you have a mechanical switch, and which is uh, closed, okay? But here, having thyristors, we have the capability to increase this uh, delay angle. And if you increase this delay angle beyond this point over here, and do not apply or provide a gate pulse to, let's say, uh, this, this thyristor over here up to this time here, then, the current cannot begin to flow in this thyristor until this time here, okay? And in that case, the, the current that will flow is shown by this dotted curve. Similarly, uh, we can, if we do not supply the gate pulse until this instant of time with respect to the zero crossing to this thyristor over here, then uh, uh, the current cannot flow at this point, rather it will flow at this point, 
and you'll get this dotted curve over here. So you can see that by increasing this delay angle, we can make the current smaller and effectively increase the inductance of this uh, you know, reactor over here. So we have a control over the reactor power. So this is controllable here. Okay, and in this case, of course, the current is lagging behind the voltage. All right, the other thing we can do is we can put uh, these two in combination of, in parallel combination. So, uh, and purposely, we can give <coughs> some kind of slope, as we see here, for control controllability of these uh, 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 delay angles for these uh, uh, thyristors here. So we can put a slight slope here and uh, make it look linear, and that's what's uh, shown here on, in figure C, where we have the characteristic of uh, this parallel combination given by this line here. Let me carefully draw it here, like this here. All right, and then we are plotting uh, the, the system characteristic looking from this point into the system, uh, and we are plotting this bus voltage times this current I over here. Yeah, so bus voltage and this current here. So you see that uh, under the normal operating condition, and let's say that corresponds to this curve A here, so it's really the intersection of uh, the system characteristic A, B, or C, and uh, this uh, uh, parallel combination of these devices shown by this green line over here, and you know, this intersection, let's say, is happening at the nominal voltage here, one per unit here, all right? All right. But now, if the voltage were to drop in this uh, system, and the characteristic is given by B over here, right? So if you, if you had that, uh, if that happens, and we didn't have this uh, parallel combination, the voltage would be at this point, V1 prime, but by supplying a, some reactive po power, uh, which is uh, looking capacitive, the intersection is here, and the voltage will drop to only V1. So rather than dropping to V1 prime, it will just drop to uh, V1. Whereas if the system voltage uh, were to increase, and we are in, in this, on this curve C, then without this parallel combination, uh, the voltage that we will get at this bus would be V2 prime. But now, uh, because of this uh, uh, static water compensation devices, uh, we are now supplying, are drawing this current, which is inductive, and the intersection of these two characters is over here, and therefore voltage would be V2 prime. Uh, V2, V2, sorry, voltage would be V2. So rather than getting a much higher voltage V2 prime, we'll get V2, all right? So we can see that by having this device, we can keep the bus voltage to be close to one per unit, its nominal value, <coughs> all right? So now we move on to this uh, device called STATCOM, and we saw this uh, in one of our modules uh, dealing with um, uh, solid state devices and HVDC uh, type things uh, that uh, uh, we can have a switch mode converter here and uh, uh, that is connected to this bus, okay? And uh, uh, at, on the DC side, we just have a large capacitor and any of the losses that occur here that can be supplied by this bus here. But uh, we will ignore that uh, for now and we'll say that we can generate or synthesize this uh, voltage at this point, and in between we have an, a reactance X over here. So clearly, uh, the voltages at these two uh, buses or points are related by this equation. And uh, for a given bus voltage, if this is given, then uh, we can synthesize this converter voltage to be whatever we want uh, in order to dictate this current here. Uh, this, so this current could be either uh, leading or lagging this uh, bus voltage here. Uh, of course, there is no 
real power transfer capability in steady state because uh, we really do not have any source of energy or uh, source of dissipation on the DC side, except for small losses in the system, which we are ignoring here. So uh, this current I converter should really be uh, you know, leading by 90 degrees or lagging by 90 degrees this uh, converter voltage uh, here. <clears throat> and uh, like I alluded to earlier, uh, in STATCOM, uh, you know, we are limited by, as we'll see in the next slide, uh, the current magnitude that it can supply in an inductive mode or in a capacitive mode. So even if the voltage goes down, we still have this rated current capability. So reactive power does go down, but it does not go down as the square of uh, the voltage uh, because uh, we can still keep the current uh, at up to its uh, rated value over here. <clears throat> the other, other type of device that we can use for, for voltage stability purposes as well is uh, so-called thyristor-controlled uh, series capacitors, TCSC. Uh, quite often uh, in high-voltage uh, AC lines, uh, we have capacitors in series that's for series compensation, and they compensate some of the inductive <coughs> reactance of the transmission line. Okay, so they make the transmission lines look uh, smaller in length, so to speak. But uh, to exercise control over it, we can, uh, put, in series with this transmission line, have a capacitor, but in parallel we have this uh, uh, branch which has an inductor in series with this back-to-back uh, uh, -back thyristor switch. So by resonance between these two branches, we can operate uh, either in this re inductive region, so to speak, where the impedance looking in, between here and here is inductive, or we can be operating in this capacitive region over here, and quite often that is the operating mode. And uh, <clears throat> so this can also be used for uh, for some damping purposes. Uh, so that's uh, there is at least one uh, such system that uh, I'm fully aware of. That's at Kenyatta, Kayenta, Kayenta substation in southwestern part of the U.S., and it's uh, designed by Siemens Corporation. All right, so that uh, basically comes, uh, brings us to the, to the end of this uh, small module where we looked at the importance of uh, uh, voltage regulation and stability and how to prevent voltage collapse. We looked at a very simple example of a radial system to analyze this uh, problem, and uh, uh, we saw how voltage can collapse as we go further uh, in terms of loading of these lines and uh, what we can do to prevent uh, this uh, voltage, uh, I, I shouldn't say voltage stability, rather voltage instability here. Okay. All right, and, uh, <clears throat> and this can be done by means of synchronous generators and their excitation control, or we can do this by means of static reactive power compensators. So thank you very much.